Hello, hi. Dr. Sanchez here. Ignore my room, it's a mess. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm going to be starting a one week streak of 24 hour shifts for a week. Q2. <laughs> I am a fifth year surgery resident, aka chief resident. I'm on trauma surgery. And if you don't know what Q2 means, it basically means you're on call every other day. So tomorrow, Friday, I go in at 6 a.m. I get off on Saturday at 6 a.m. I'm off or post call Saturday. Then on Sunday, I go back in at 6 a.m. I get off at 6 a.m. on Monday. Monday, I am post call. Tuesday, I work another 24. Wednesday, I'm post call. Thursday, I work another 24. And Friday, I'm post call. <laughs> I know it sounds insane because it is insane. I'm gonna take you with me. Today is Thursday, I had education this morning and I'm just kind of enjoying my life before this week of chaos. <laughs> Walked into the wrong room, so that's cool. <laughs> See a consult. I actually left the abdomen open and sent the patient to the ICU. Then we did a laparoscopic ventral hernia repair, and then we did a laparoscopic appendectomy, so we took out a patient's appendix uh, because they had appendicitis. Now I'm going to get ready because I agreed to do this talk with a medical school, <laughs> but I've been running around. I had to go get signed out for the ICU patients. I'm going to do this talk with some medical students that I agreed to, and then I'm going to get back to it. It is 9.06. I meant to vlog more today. I clearly missed the boat and I ran over to the call room because I had agreed to do this talk with these medical students that reached out via email and if I would talk to them there are actually like 40 people on the call which I was not expecting I was kind of expecting a smaller group and I didn't prepare like a formal presentation but I just kind of put something together just to kind of like tell them my journey mostly minority medical students and so I told them kind of my journey as a minority student as someone whose parents were not in the medical field actually none of my family even my parents didn't even graduate high school and so just navigating the whole process and getting to where i am today and it was awesome i loved talking to them it was so cool so cool that social media has given me the opportunity to speak at medical schools and speak to medical students speak to my journey and kind of help them along the way also a resident that was supposed to come in with me tonight i might not be able to make it so i am going to try to get a nap in right now there is a pa here that's helping out with the floor stuff i have the icu phone right here so i'm getting all the icu phone calls and i'm going to just try to take a quick nap before the pa leaves because then i'll be all on my own and if chaos ensues, I need to be awake and alive. I'm also pretty sure I'm getting sick. I have a stuffy nose. I've been walking around with a mask everywhere. I just finished my first 24 hour shifts. I got a bunch of phone calls from the ICU, which I was able to answer pretty easily. And then I did go check on a couple patients in the ICU. But other than that, the night was pretty chill and I actually got to take a nap. I feel like I actually rested for a few hours, which is again a miracle you know what i think this was god like god's got me because he knows that i'm about to be on a week of 24s and i need to start off well rested so that i can survive through this whole week anyway i just got home this is my bag where i keep all my toiletries makeup remover deodorant toothpaste all that stuff and then i always take this giant bag with my laptop candy a journal just in case i actually have time to get some work done or do some journaling or something like that ¿Dónde están? Lo quiero hacer <laughs> otra vez. Otra vez, okay, tápate, tápate. Es que papi también, okay? Okie okay, dokie. Okay, okay. ¿Dónde están todos? Sorpresa. <laughs> oh my goodness. My bathroom's a mess right now. Good morning. Dr. Sanchez here, even though you can't see me. It is Sunday and it is my second 24 of the next seven days. I honestly did not do much yesterday. I pretty much just went to brunch with my daughter and my fiance and then we lounged around for the rest of the day. I didn't sleep necessarily, but I was just kind of lounging around, watching some TV. I wanted to study. I 
just didn't even have it in me to study because I was so tired. And I've been feeling a little stuffy. I decided that rest was probably in my best interest. 5.50, we do sign out at six. So I'm gonna get there just in time to get sign out. First, I'm gonna drop my stuff off in the call room and then I'm gonna run over and meet with the team. I'm not gonna lie to you, Sundays suck. I don't like working Sundays. Sundays are family days for me. It's what I grew up doing. My dad never worked on Sundays. We always just took Sunday to be with the family, to go to church, to eat out with the family. So for that reason, working Sundays makes me extra sad. <laughs> what it's okay we're gonna survive because after this I have two weekends off in a row I am so excited for that <laughs> granted one of them is my vacation half week but you know what whatever it's not the point <laughs> we are gonna hope that today is a good chill day we have a little fridge near the call room so that's where I put my food we also have a microwave <laughs> And then blankets. What is this? with my intern now I'm going to the OR for the second case which is a lot coley so this morning one of the attendings rounded with one of the PAs rounded on half of the patients with the intern and one of the attendings rounded on the other half with one of the PAs and then another attending rounded in the ICU there have been two level twos so far uh, the first one we are signing off it was a fall and there's basically no injuries the second one, we're still waiting on some imaging to come back. And then my intern is going to see two consults right now. I'm gonna go in and do this laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So we're gonna take out a patient's gallbladder for acute cholecystitis. And then I'm going to check in with my intern, intern afterwards and we'll go see those consults. I bought this thing that's inside. Don't think I'm allowed to put holes in the wall in the call room. I'm going to just lean it over here. I put this up and I started an attending quote wall. This is the first quote. If you need me, I'll call you. I just feel like call rooms should be more homey considering I have to spend so much time here. I did not want nasty hospital food. So I brought food from home today. I did get a hospital spoon. my limoncito. <laughs> I did orders on both of my post-op patients. I also did my operative reports, which is basically where we just write everything that happened during the surgery in fancy medical terms. There was also a pediatric level two trauma, which we, well, my intern went and saw, but then the pediatric team was actually here. So they went over there and they kind of took over from there. I think I just aged like 10 years because my attending didn't scrub into the total colectomy that I just did with my intern. <laughs> Everything went fine, but I definitely just aged like 10 years. And now I'm just having some cereal before I have to head back to the OR. <laughs> so that one breeding room. We have two more cases. It is 8.24 on a Sunday. Went to the ICU and checked on my patient, put in the post-op orders, and now I'm going to be going to the OR for the next patient. I was just in the operating room. There is a first year, a second year, and myself a fifth year. I was scrubbed in with the attending, but they just called a level one trauma, so I'm going down to see the level one trauma while the attending finishes the case. And I will call him, if anything. I went and saw a level one. Stapled and did some sutures on the head. Scanned, pan scanned, everything was fine. Caught up with my second year who'd seen like four new patients. So we ran through those. 
then my intern went to go see a patient who was desatting and tachycardic upstairs. So I went and saw that patient, ordered some stat scans. Some milk. Then I saw an emergent consult in the ED that needs to go to surgery because there's a perforation in the intestine somewhere. So we booked and consented that patient for surgery. Finished up the appendectomy, followed up on some imaging, went to go see three more consults. One is for a coli, one is for a fall, one is for a brain bleed. I am working on the note for the patient that's about to go to the operating room right now because we need a note done so that they can actually get the patient into the operating room. This is the first surgery, second surgery, third surgery, fourth surgery, fifth surgery and about to go into a sixth one. It is 3.29. We just finished up our last operation. It was a Hartman's procedure, meaning we took out a piece of the patient's large intestine or colon, and we created an ostomy. Thanks, me. Oh. It is 9.01 a.m. I'm just heading to the call room to grab my stuff. I laid down for approximately 45 minutes. I woke up at 5 a.m. I followed up on some stat imaging, which actually didn't show anything terribly concerning. So we had gotten a CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis on a patient who wasn't doing so well, but everything looked okay. Then I got two consults. I went down to the ED to see them. One was for cholecystitis, infection, inflammation of the gallbladder. And then the other one was for a fall with some fractures, some rib fractures and some pelvic fractures. Both of those patients were stable, one of them for surgery. And then while I was down in the ED, they called a level one trauma. So I headed over to the trauma bay. I saw the level one trauma. My car just started speaking. I don't know what's going on. I saw the level one trauma. There were multiple lacerations that needed to be sutured, so we sutured those. The patient was stable, um, but we did pan scan them, meaning that we scanned everything just to make sure that we weren't missing anything. We did have to intubate that patient as well to protect their airway. And that patient will be going to the ICU. From there, I went over and met with the team in this conference room for Monday morning sit down rounds, which is when the entire team all of the surgeons, the pharmacists, the social workers, every team member kind of gets together, all the PAs, and discusses all the patients on the list. So we ran from top to bottom through all of the patients on the list. Then we did peer review, uh, which is when we discussed some cases where maybe things could have been done a little bit better. So we discussed three cases on peer review. You know, there's this bizarre thing that happens where I get energy in the morning. It is 9.09 a.m. I have been up since 5 a.m. yesterday. I did six cases in the past 24 hours. First, we did an abdominal re-exploration. So it was a patient whose abdomen we had left open. We went back in. We had actually left the intestine disconnected, which is the thing that you can do. So we reconnected the two ends of the intestine using a stapler and then we closed the patient. The second case was a cholecystectomy, so we took out a patient's gallbladder. Then the third case was a total abdominal colectomy, um, so we took out a patient's colon where we connected the small bowel to the patient's abdominal wall. After that, we did another exploratory laparotomy for a patient who had gotten a gastrostomy tube. So a tube was placed in this, into the stomach for feeding for gastric contents and air leaking around this tube. So we had to kind of fix that site and then we also had to suture the stomach up to the abdominal wall. We did an appendectomy, so we took out a patient's appendix. And then the last case that we did was we did a case on a patient who perforated their colon after they had a stent placed. So we actually took out that portion of colon and then we created a colostomy. Um, so we connected the colon to the patient's abdominal wall. We are on our way home. Almost there. It's 4.37. Monday is my post-call day. I just woke up. 
I had some food and I honestly think I'm gonna go back to sleep. Good morning. That is the moon. Oh my God, you can barely see it. 5.45 and I'm on my way to work again. <laughs> We're almost there. It is Tuesday. I have one more 24 after this. Well, two, including this one. My keychain is literally me. It's like a fluffy pink heart and a guarda. I've been here more than I've been at my house this last week. Why? Thank you. We did some rib plating this morning and essentially a chest wall reconstruction. It was a really big case that took about four hours. And then we sent that patient back to the ICU and then I just rounded with the ACS team because the trauma team had already rounded. So I just went to go round with them to help out. We have another big rib plating chest wall reconstruction case. And then we have like four more cases after that. There were also two level two traumas, which my intern saw while I was in the operating room. And then she told me about them. Another 24, just another day. And I'm gonna eat right now because I'm hungry. If I don't eat right now, I will never eat. That's just what will happen. It'll be 7 p.m. and I will not have eaten. And I'm here till tomorrow, so your girl needs sustenance. Surviving, not thriving. And of course, as soon as we come out of surgery, they call us about a patient who's bleeding in the ICU that we're not familiar with. We go see the patient and they actually need IR to embolize a vessel that's bleeding. So we called IR stat, they came over, we discussed it with them. They're taking the patient over and we told them to just call us if they need us. Back to the operating room I go. We finished a second rib plating case, checked in with our ICU team so they knew about the patient. Then ran down and got some sign out, uh, ran the list with one of the other team members for the rest of the floor patients. Now I'm about to head back to the operating room to do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. We're gonna take out a patient's gallbladder. I haven't done any of my op notes yet, but we did do post-op orders. <laughs> Just finished a gallbladder. It is 6.15, I'm going to get sign out. La Nancy trying, haciendo el wellness. <laughs> we have the wellness pack. <laughs> a video taking a photo. <laughs> it's a video. Oh, but. <laughs> uh, residency wellness. field trip. Wellness. <laughs> wellness break. <laughs> Just kidding, we're covering trauma. <laughs> I'm doing my op notes now. I'm trying to figure out what I should eat. I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't know, I can Uber eat something, maybe. Just got a consult in the ED and they called a level one trauma, so it's a two for one. When we have a level one, they always call our phone and let us know what it is. All we know it's that it was a motor vehicle crash. I went down to the ED for the level one trauma who's now in the ICU. And then I got called for five consults, five. One was a patient who recently had surgery that came back. Another two of them were falls. Another one was a motor vehicle crash that actually had no injuries. And then another one was a perirectal abscess, which I did an incision and drainage at the bedside in the ED. Got myself some yogurt with honey <laughs> and fruit loops. It's 12.30, I just wrote the notes for all the consults and now my Epic, AKA the electronic medical record is not working. I did sign out for an hour and now I'm going home. It is 7.25. I got all the consults last night. So many. 
It is 10.09. I took, well, I actually didn't sleep. I slept for like two and a half hours last night at the hospital in between all the consult. And then I got home this morning and I was trying to sleep, but I cannot sleep. I don't know why I'm so tired. There's just, there's a lot of light in my house. I don't know if it's that. I think I just, I don't know. Like during the day I have a problem falling asleep. And so I'm going to go to the gym right now, which is probably also not a great idea because I'm not gonna get a great workout in because I'm so tired, but we shall try and maybe it'll make me more tired and I can finally sleep. I mean, I do have to shower anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> it's Thursday. It's my last 24 before I get a weekend off. <laughs> I'm so excited. I have my little coffee. I grabbed a ginger shot this morning. <laughs> Mostly because it tastes like lemon. I really like it. This morning we had M&M. Then we had Journal Club where they presented two research articles. So two residents went up and we went over research articles that we read. And then we had educational session for two hours on topics that are gonna be on our in-service exam, which we take every year in January for general surgery. And then we had another kind of review um, covering a different topic. And now I am about to head to the gym. I'm gonna get a workout in, cause otherwise I'm never gonna work out. Then I'm gonna eat some food and then I'm going to head over to the level one trauma center for my trauma shift. This is my cool bag of things, my white coat, my bag of toiletries. It's a joke. It's a joke. We're not true. Lucy. We got some Jimmy John's sandwich, uh, chips, and a pickle, and a drink. Going to eat this in my car. I'm trying really hard not to be depressed, but I just weighed myself at the gym and I've lost seven pounds in the past month, which happens when I'm anxious and can't eat and I can't sleep. <laughs> it sucks. It actually takes a lot for me to be able to gain weight, so I gained like a lot of muscle mass by working out and working really hard. And now it's like I got a huge setback and I basically got to start over. But it's fine. It's going to be great. We're back. I'm working on my presentation for plastic surgery meeting because I have that at the end of the month and I actually have to submit it today. So I'm working on that right now. The views. went and saw a level two, which was a accidental self-inflicted gunshot wound. Also saw a consult for appendicitis, and then I called my attending about it, and now I'm going to meet my attending to see another patient. Putting in my note for this patient, and I ordered Uber Eats. So I'm waiting for that to come. I ordered pho, or pho, 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 whatever. Back to the ED to talk to a patient about surgery for tomorrow. So my Uber driver, Apparently got a flat tire, so he literally had my food, but he's at least five minutes from the hospital. And since I can't leave because if a trauma comes in, I have to be here, I couldn't get my food. He was like, oh, you can come get it, but I, I can't leave, so I have to reorder my food. <laughs> Went to see a level one trauma. It was an injury from football, uh, waiting for the scans to result. And I left my Uber Eats waiting. Uber Eats waiting for like an hour, so now it's cold. Look what I found. My eyes are starting to water. I feel like when I stay on too long, my eyes start to water for whatever reason. 
my solar quarantine unit. Smells good. <sighs> I forgot to bring a towel. I'm just gonna make it work with the paper towels here. It's gonna be great. This is very comforting. I feel like I need comfort food when I'm at the hospital. Because I'm sad I don't get to sleep in my house, so I need some kind of like homey comforty thing. <laughs> Got called by the nurse that the family for one of our patients wanted to speak to us. So we need to go do that. 4 a.m. We're gonna see council. Construction. Going to sign out so I can go home. Finally, last 24. I put a note in for the consult. Finished up working three weeks straight and a week of 24s. I'm so done. I am so so done. <laughs> There's no one in my house. <laughs> They left, they already went to work and daycare, unfortunately. But I'm gonna go take a nap, if I can. I really cannot sleep during the day, but I'm going to really try. But y'all don't understand the, the joy, the joy inside me right now from not having to go back to work. <laughs> Today's Friday, I'm post call. Tomorrow I'm off, Saturday, and then Sunday I'm off as well. I do go back to work on Monday, but you know what? I'm so excited for these two days. <laughs> So sad. I pretty much just forgot to vlog the rest of it, but I did see, I think, two or three more consults. We had a trauma that wasn't operative, and then booked one of the patients for surgery for an appendectomy to take out their appendix, and that was about it. Uh, luckily, it wasn't too crazy. I did get a bunch of phone calls per usual, but we're done. <laughs> we're eating some. Delicious and nutritious cereal. Thank you for watching and thank you for coming back to my channel. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>